All right, what do we got? Well, it's got my price tag on it. That's far enough, 7021P. This all looks familiar. This in the air cleaner. Box is, oops, sorry. Bag apart is not broken. If she's got compression, I'm taking her. I think we might be uh, might be taking her home. Well, we're home and already off to a great start. Went to take the bag off. Yeah, you see a problem? <laughs> uh, well, we know we're missing the air cleaner. I just popped the uh, cap off. Has fuel in it. Doesn't smell terrible, but looks a little cloudy. <sighs> I don't know what the heck's going on here, but step one is I'm going to spray a little ether in it and see if it actually runs, and uh, we go from there. And this is just a little two-stroke gasoline. And, uh, give it a little squirt. Place your bets. See smoke. One more score it with fuel just to say we tried. Let's give her a quick bath and uh, get her up on the table. Doesn't she clean up nice? Well, <clears throat> as nice as it came out, good looks don't mow the grass. Um, some things have presented themselves. I don't know how, but... The little spring came off that uh, it just keeps the, the throttle, the governor shaft from uh, hopping back and forth. Don't ask me how that came off or if it was already off. Um, we'll find out. I don't actually know if this is going to be a viable fixer. I mean, look at this wheel. Let me get you set up. So the issues I've seen so far, this wheel is poached. I don't know if this can be tightened up or what. Um, this is not the right nut, so that's got to be fixed. This is broken. This cable is, I mean, it works, but uh, it looks like this handle's been folded a couple times. Yeah, the cable's all cattywampus. Uh, we know it runs, and it was actually running off of what's in the tank, so... It sounds like a, a gentle carb clean. It might get us home. And obviously, I don't know if you can see, but the blade is on upside down. So, where do you want to start first? <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Uh, this, this wheel isn't as bad. Why don't we take that wheel off, see if uh, there's any way we can tighten it up. All right, 14 minutes. And these, I don't think, it's not in the wheel. These are actually fairly tight, even though they got no little to no tread on them. So the issue is in here. How is that? Is that a nut and bolt? Yeah, it feels like there's a nut on the back. And there's the bolt. All right, so half inch nut on the inside, three quarter on the outside. And then everything just falls apart. Excellent. So what do we got? Is that how that went? I'm gonna blow this all off real quick. All right, so what I'm seeing, <coughs> is there is a 
spring washer right there. And it almost looks like it's upside down. So that is what I'm going to try. <laughs> is, uh, you laugh, sometimes it's that easy. Just flip that washer over. And throw it back on and see what happens. What do we got to lose, right? It took me two minutes to get this far. Too tight. Yep. And it's still loose enough to adjust. Yes, it is. Let's just match one, two, one, two. Is it really going to be that simple? Don't say that too loud. Yeah. All right. Awesome. On to the next problem. And so just to confirm, I went back over to this side just because this is tight. And it is, in fact, that washer is supposed to be flipped the other way. So somebody probably had that wheel off at some point and uh, just did not put it back on right and just didn't care. Awesome. And while we're on the subject of wheels, let's uh, try to get this. I don't know why. It's not even like it's an odd sized nut. Well, luckily it looks like they didn't strip it. And I popped off the nut from the other side. Number one to, you know, check the size. Oh yeah, that's gonna be fine. Just wanted to check the size and uh, make sure it wasn't stripped. So, uh, unfortunately that's a trip to the hardware store because you do need one with a, um, what's it called? A little flat surface right there. So I'm making the executive decision to get a new blade. This thing is trashed. All the fins are gone. They're just broken off from being mowed upside down. And with the bag, that's what's doing your, your lifting of the blades and your bagging of the grass. So, I mean, it's a damn shame because if it was in good shape fin-wise... This would take a nice edge. You know, if only they rode on the bottom of the blade grass side and, uh, you know, people could read. But anyway, moving on. And it's Christmas in July. Got some new parts in. Got a new uh, kill cable. Got a new air filter cover with a new filter. And nice new blade. Let's get to work. Yeah, we'll start with the cable because it's easy. And uh, just zoom in real quick so you guys can see. I talk about this tool every time I use it because I love it. <laughs> it's, uh, <clears throat> I know I've said them before, BS Small Engines, fellow YouTuber, and he 3D prints these himself. Look at how nice it makes doing this cable job. Right over, one, two, three, and it's out. It's, it's honestly just ingenious. In its simplicity <clears throat> look them up guys they're not that expensive they're invaluable to have and then this end just pulls right off the handlebars you pull it out of there and clip the new one into its place slide the cable done and while we're on the handlebars anyway it's the little things that drive me crazy screw wasn't even sitting in the hole the right way. Now I know what you're saying. Isn't your OCD going to bother you that it's different from the other one? And the answer is yes. Yes, it is. Which is why I replaced both. <laughs> Rather have one spare than one mismatched. Moving on. And we'll toss the blade on. Brass side down, line her up with the two little pieces, start that by hand, send her home. 
Perfect. What's next? All right, we've waited long enough. Time to pull the carb. See what we're up against. This is another one of those carbs where these long bolts hold the whole deal together. I already just, I felt the gasket hit my hand, so. That's just held on with the PCV hose. Gasket. And now this choke assembly, which isn't even hooked up. Look at that. Someone's been in here. That spring is supposed to be, I believe, clipped onto the outside of here. I think. I'm gonna have to look it up just to be certain. But anyway, we'll touch that in a minute. Why is this disconnected? Was my next question. This is supposed to be all the way over there. I mean, the hook is bent out a little, but it shouldn't have just come off. Fuel line looks like it's never been touched. So the plot thickens. Let's get it over to the bench. All right. Well, first things first, this spring does belong on the other side. Oh, this spring does belong on the other side of this post. I don't know why or how that would have come off. Interesting. Watch your ears. I'm going to blow this out real quick. I don't like that. It's very loose. I mean, just blowing it out, blew it right back off again. I don't know. I gotta look into uh, why that's doing that. But, putting the cart before the horse. Carburetor, let's see. Uh, I don't think there was any real crud in there. I remember I took a bunch of water out of it, I think. This has been on my table for a while. Um, underneath this crap is a Phillips head, or, sorry, <coughs> a JIS head screw, which is for the pilot jet. Uh, and there's definitely some crap sitting in there. This whole carb is just caked with crud. The float looks fine. Let's get the main jet out. I have confidence that this will uh, come back with a carb cleaning just because we, uh, you know, we had it running. We had to help it run, you know, get running, but it was running off what was in the... Uh, running off what was in the tank, so. And I'm gonna drain that out, clean out the gas tank and fuel lines, blow all that crud out and etc. How's the main? <laughs> Main's pretty clear. Emulsion tube. There it is. There is some crap on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm confident this will come back with a quick ultrasonic bath. Let me turn you guys on when that's done. Fortunately, I happen to have my neighbor's mower in here, which has the very same engine and carb setup. And I can see almost instantly what happened. This is bent. That's supposed to be straight across, which would give that spring much more tension. So I don't know if this thing got dropped or, I mean, that's kind of a, yeah, I guess it's open enough to where it could get whacked. So we'll straighten that out. Should be good to go. What do you say we get this uh, gas tank off and get, get looking at it? Three 10 millimeter nuts. And this pull cord should just pull up and out of the way. 
it is quite grimy in there. So I am gonna shoot a little lube, blow the, some of the dust out. And I believe this all should just come off in one go. Perfect. Any mouseness? No? It's, everything's pretty clean. You know, it's a shame when people throw away perfectly good mowers that just need a little bit of love. <laughs> I mean, it's the world we live in now. Everything's just disposable. And why fix it when I can buy a new one that's going to need to be fixed? And then not fix that one. And you get your cleanest dirty parts tray. And just dump her out. Curious to see how much water is actually in this fuel. I'll turn you back on once it settles out. It never shows up as well in person. But can you see at the bottom? It looks like flubber. It, it's that dancing puddle at the bottom. Right here. That is there. Now you can see it. That's all water. Water and crud. If only this thing had a fuel filter, right? Well, if you come to the back of the fuel tank, finish taking the hose off. See that? It actually came out with the hose. It's not supposed to, but that's your fuel filter. Like I said many times, it just stays in like that and, I mean, looks pretty unassuming to the average bear. But uh, I've had these get plugged up with crap and have you scratching your head for at least an hour or two, so good thing to blow them out when you have it apart. Yeah, I just blew all the dust out. Let's see if we can't give her a little bit of, uh, a little bit of loving. Just kind of squirting into the... Any orifices is that I can see. Oh yeah. That's already just worlds better. I'm happy with that. Hey, I'm back from the ultrasonic. Look at that. Never ceases to amaze me. Clean as a whistle. Alright. So everything else cleaned up pretty well. Um, I mean we know it ran. You know, it wasn't uh, in too, too bad a shape. Sorry for the noise in the back. It's uh, 85 degrees and uh, yeah, enough said. So put this back together. <clears throat> I don't see, I, I mean, I'm gonna jinx it. I'm saying it right now, but I honestly don't see any issues um, that could, could happen here. <clears throat> it, uh, it ran. And I'm predicting that the issue with why it wouldn't start was that choke was not uh, hooked up and operational. So it wasn't, uh, wasn't actually choking itself to start. I mean, plus we did see a little bit of water in that fuel. So I'm saying that it wasn't getting enough choke, which is why when I gave it that spray of starting fluid, it fired right up and it took off. Uh, that paired with the water and the fuel gives me uh, a lot of confidence. Really building the suspension here. If this thing doesn't run, might have to take down the channel. <laughs> All right, pilot jet in, or pilot jet screw in. And we'll see you back over at the machine. So as I said before, it's a bit of a juggling act to get this uh, these, this style of carb back in. So I sort of keep everything, you know, laid out easily, you know, in my grasp so that I'm not fumbling. And plus you guys are watching, so that means it's gonna be extra interesting. I'll try to stay out of your way as best I can. I've hooked up the spring that was not, you know, attached previously. I am going to give this end a little bit of a uh, a bend to ensure that it doesn't come out again, but I mean, it shouldn't have come out in the first place. Sorry, there's my elbow. Just a little bit. All right. That's ready. So we're going to start with the choke plate. And can you see? 
See this little nub right here sticking out? That actuates the back of this. And it's filled with, I'm going to call it wax, uh, which expands with heat and makes it so the, uh, it, it, it turns the carb off as soon as it, you know, heats up. So, and I'm pretty sure it's a wax. It's, uh, it is replaceable, obviously. I've never had to replace one. Um, it, it works pretty well. I mean, leave it to Honda. You know, they always come up with uh, cool ideas. So what I'm doing, sandwich the outside gasket, pass the bolt through, make sure you catch the gasket, caught the plate, throw in the fuel line on, maybe. line is in back gasket piece on okay here's the tricky part <laughs> these mosquitoes pull the bolts out get your plate Throw the bolts through and pray. Oh, did we? Almost. It'll go, just, you know, don't rush it. Don't rip a gasket, take your time. I can't tell if you guys are looking at the car or looking at my shoulder, but that's lined up all right we're through all of them there's my head and there's a bolt hole all right got one started Whew. okay you guys were still looking we're good throttle moves choke is moving all right we'll tighten that down slap the air filter in and turn it on a second and of course don't forget to plug your breather hose back into the back of the air filter cover many have forgotten many engines have died dead man clamp installed just turn the fuel on. We'll give that a second. How many pulls? I'm hoping for two. Fire in the hole. for much better than that folks nice she's a survivor well if the oil's nice and warm that's the last thing to do dump the oil on it and send her on her way and not looking too bad for something we uh picked up off the side of the road runs great looks a lot better than it did um got the wheels decently straight too you know now it's not doing the uh the tow out shuffle <clears throat> bag is in decent shape it's a great little mower i mean uh you know it's just stop throwing things away people just put a little put a little time into them all right guys i'm gonna wrap this one up and uh thanks again for watching liking commenting subscribing and uh we'll see you in the next one bye